we can make sure that uh, the teaching of Greek uh, remains at a very high level despite the crisis. There are less resources available, it's true, but there is still a need to continue passing on this great heritage to uh, children abroad. And we have, we'll have to come up with novel solutions. I know that a parent in Cologne, Paris or Dusseldorf wants there to be high-level teaching, high-level education, but these parents might be reluctant to pay this money or send this money to Greece, but they would gladly pay that money to a school or an institute if there were transparency. Their knowledge of Greek will be very important. There are a lot of educated people around the world who would love to speak Greek. Uh, there are many people who would uh, love to be in their position. And I think that it's a great asset. It's a great software almost, if I may put it that way, if I can use a very modern word. And this helps them look at the world from a different point of view as well. And the efforts that Greeks abroad are um, doing in order to keep their language alive is very important, despite the very difficult situation that Greece finds itself and despite the huge difficulties we're up against, I think that Greece has to invest both uh, morally, politically and economically in this and support these efforts as much as possible. Languages have never been as deeply embedded in the constitution of the European Union as they are today. If you look at the Treaty of the European Union, if you look at the Charter of Fundamental Rights, languages are there and they're, very, they're there very strongly. And they are a fundamental right. They have become a fundamental right, as they should be. Secondly, as I was just saying, if you look at the European Union's next programme for education and training, Erasmus for All, which will come into force in, in 2014, languages are at the heart of it. It's the question of learning customs and habits, not simply learning so that one can exist properly in the state in which one finds oneself, but also it's a way of minimizing racism in various regions that you, in the classes you'll see kids from China, kids from Southern Asia, some five of them will be from Africa, and it's not a question of them just speaking languages between themselves, but also they are encourage other kids to learn glass, learn languages, Chinese for example, so that they can interchange. What does the deficit hypothesis mean? This means that uh, you feel that this immigrant or citizen uh, lacks knowledge in the language of the country, of your country, and needs to make up for it. You're not really interested in whether they have their own mother tongue or not. But that community language, uh, or rather this, uh, this language, is seen as a community language, as the, their business, the business of that particular community. In the 1980s uh, and onwards, the Australians shifted from the deficit hypothesis to what we call the uh, hypothesis of difference. In other words, that these languages were languages that were being spoken in the Australian community and therefore could be included in the official state system. So we in Europe are still in a f phase where we do respect diversity and when we take our decisions but with a lot of flaws and weaknesses as far as the implementation of these decisions are concerned and as far as multilingualism is concerned that is and multiculturalism these are two crucial pillars as far as the shaping of the European Union is concerned but when all said and done let's face it we've got new and old member states some states have joined very recently with a very different background and history to the so-called old member states. And it's not a question of assimilation. It's a question of, I think, it would allow greater confidence and ease when we deal with the question of these minority languages. 
we want to set up an institute for uh, the Greek language and uh, Greek culture. Now, this will be for Greek students of Greek descent and for any young person who wants to learn Greek, uh, for adults, special professional groups or professional orders. And, of course, they'll be able to provide certification to bodies that teach the Greek language. We want this foundation or institute to set up a Greek language teaching model uh, by harnessing material that's already being produced by other bodies in Greece and that, of course, we're going to have to work hand in hand with. The role of public television in the maintenance and spread of our mother tongue of Greek. There is a founding charter, of course, for the public broadcasting, but that's not enough. What is TV doing? It's trying, along with other channels, to put out broadcasts where Greek is spoken correctly. Also, we have the satellite channel, of course, and we want to try to reach out to Greeks of second and third generation.